G'day, it's Heath here from PickingLessons.com. In this mandolin lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at some major and minor arpeggios on the mandolin. And in that little intro, uh, I was playing a D major arpeggio into a D minor arpeggio. So the D major arpeggio sounded like this. And the D minor arpeggio sounded like this. Now between the two arpeggios there, the major and the minor, there is only one note that's different. The note that changes between the two when we're in D and D minor is the F sharp and the F. So in D major, the three notes that we have that actually build this arpeggio are D, F sharp, A, and then the octave D. Now in D minor, we have D, F, A to the D. So between a D major chord and a D minor, and the arpeggio for those chords, we have only one note difference. So we have D, F sharp, A, and D for the D major. And for the D minor chord, we have D, F, A, and then to the D for the octave. And arpeggio are the notes that build the chord. So we're not gonna to get too much into the theory in this video, we're just gonna have a look at some patterns that you can start to, to get your fingers around. But essentially, the chord is built with the one, the three, and the five from the major scale. That's for the major chord. Now for the minor chord, we take those same notes, but we flatten a third. So the major chord, we take the first, the third, and the fifth notes from the major scale, which sounds like this. And then the minor arpeggio, we take those same notes, but we flatten the third note, which was the F sharp to an F. So D, D, F, A. So let's have a look at this first pattern, the, the major. Uh, the major arpeggio for D, and now this can be started on the open string D. And then we're gonna to move to the F sharp, and the F sharp is the fourth fret there on string uh, three. And we have the A, open A, and then we'll finish on the D. So D, F sharp, A, and D. Open third, fourth fret third, open second, fifth fret second. Okay, so let's turn that into the minor arpeggio. So for a D minor chord, the D minor arpeggio would be basically the same, except instead of the F sharp, we're gonna have the F. So we'll go from the open D to the third fret there on the F, open A, and to the octave D. So open third, third fret on the third string, open second string, and fifth fret on the second string. Open D, F, A, D. So the major arpeggio and the minor arpeggio. So that's starting on the D string. Now these two patterns, so for the major and the minor, can be both moved to different positions. So for a start, we can move it up to the starting on the G string and we could play a G major or a G minor. And the same, we could start on the A string and play an A major and an A minor or the A minor. So the building blocks for the chords are always the same. So we end up with the same patterns, which makes it really easy to start, to start moving these around. Let's have a look at an example of a tune that has uh, an arpeggio as a main part of the melody. So one that's really popular is Soldier's Joy. If we listen to the first part of Soldier's Joy, we get this D major arpeggio. So you can hear there, or you can see there, we have A, F sharp, D, F sharp, A. So there's a really good example of where the arpeggio fits within a tune. Uh, another example we could use perhaps would be Whiskey Before Breakfast. So 
So that opening run there over the D chord in Whiskey Before Breakfast, we're using the D major scale. But listen to where the important notes or the, the notes that are emphasized are coming in. The open A from the arpeggio. The open D. Okay, and so you're gonna find this a lot, and you're gonna, if you keep your ear out for it, you really start to notice that these arpeggios are really important. So get your fingers around the major arpeggio and also the minor arpeggio. Uh, but building on that, knowing where the notes are from the chord, really reinforce your melody playing and your improvising. Essentially, the notes that build the chord, so the arpeggio notes, are going to be the strongest in your melody. Okay, so if you visit pickandlessons.com, you'll find a chart with these arpeggios on it, plus the movable shapes, but you'll also find part two of this video lesson where we'll explore the, the movable shapes for the arpeggio. So we'll have a look at how we can move up the neck and move these around into the extended version or play different chords. Play any chord you like, B flat, B flat minor. Visit pickandlessons.com, we'll have a look through these movable shapes in the second part of the video and you'll also find the chart so you can have a look at all the arpeggio shapes we've been looking at.